references, their cultural sort of high points. They, he captures the zeitgeist every time he sort of uh, presents a story and what a memorable experience it always is. And I think that's exactly sort of ties in completely with the ethos of what we try to do at Netflix. I mean, if every night is to be a Netflix night, I think we, what we want to leave behind with every one of our members, every one of our audience, is experiences that they talk about, and experiences that sort of stay with them, whether it's in the form of a film, whether it's in the form of a series, an unscripted documentary, reality show. I think it's a diverse experience, but when it comes from an auteur like Mr. Bansali, I think it, the experience lasts much longer, the conversations are much louder. I can tell you the excitement for the show is not just in India, it's across the world. People are waiting for Hira Mandi. He has, we've seen that with Gangubai, right? We've seen uh, you know, a post from the Queen of Thailand dressed as Gangubai, sort of enacting that. That's the power of content and that's the power of you know, the agency that we as a conduit have for these stories to take it wide and far and wide and really influence people. It, um, I really don't have any other way to say it. it's a match made in heaven. <laughs> it absolutely is, it absolutely is. So Nakshi, when you're portraying a character like this, it's so strong, yet I would like to say a little complex, very complex female Not character. Not little, very complex. Very complex female <laughs> character, right? So what is a character like that? What are the kind of opportunities that a character like that presents to you as an actor? And how does it kind of maybe push you further to excel on screen? I think every actor craves for that challenge yeah. uh, when you're doing a film, when you're doing a role, especially for me, like I've grown throughout my profession, I've learned through experience. I started off completely from scratch. I had no experience of being on a film set. I used to not visit my dad's sets when I was a child. <laughs> uh, I had no training, uh, whether it was acting or dancing or anything of the sort. I was not groomed for it. I was literally thrown into the deep end of the pool and said, okay, now swim. And that's how I learned. So every experience for me was, I, I really cherish it because I learned a lot from it. Every person that I've worked with, I've learned a lot from. And which has got, got me to this point today where a Sanjalila Bansali comes to me and he has the confidence in me to offer me a role like Faridhan, who is very, very complex. And um, beyond a point, like I've been working for the last 14 years and I've done all sorts of roles. I started off with, um, uh, uh, you know, these really commercial masala, so, so to speak, films where uh, it was always about the hero, the hero, the hero, uh, which I'm not complaining. It really gave me an audience. It gave me a far and wide reach. Um, it gave me the confidence and then um, where I was able to kind of shoulder films on my own. That's when I started playing really strong female characters where, and which were different from the other, whether it was an Akira or a Noor or a Khandani Shafa Khana, whether it was a Dahar. So I consciously chose roles that were something that I've not played before, that I've not done before. And that really pushes me and challenges me as an actor. So when Sir came to me with this, I just looked at him and I was like, thank you for imagining me like this because it's just such an honor for a actor when a director envisions you in a way that nobody ever has even thought of you as. Yeah. So that is something that every actor craves for. And when he did come to me, I was like, you know what? I'm on, <laughs> I have to do this. And if I may, you know, I've had the privilege of seeing the show multiple times. So what a performance it is. So Nakshi is, I think, best, best, in, okay, and really like an Sinakshi amazing, Sinakshi Sinakshi amazing Sinakshi. portrayal of not just a complex character, but really, really delicious character. <laughs> you know, she's got all the shades that a woman would, <laughs> and she plays them to perfection. Times 10, uh, all the shades that a woman would have, <laughs> amplified, <laughs> magnified, Dramat yeah. dramatized. <laughs> yeah. We can't wait to see all of that. All the shades <laughs> amplified and magnified because at the end of the day, it is Sanjilila Bansali. Yeah. We expect nothing less and we get nothing less. Yeah. Tane, you know, when we talk about women's stories, um, I for one think that it's not just women on screen, but it's also got a lot to do with the women behind the scenes, mm -hmm. right? And I think, and from what I've seen at Netflix and around, there are a lot of women who are also helming the project from behind the screens. What kind of a difference do you think it makes to storytelling, especially when it comes to women's storytelling, when you have a strong women team backing it? You know, I think any team needs to be a dream team. That's the, that's the sort of fundamental that we operate with at Netflix. 
But I will say from experience that when it is a team of women, I think the dream team becomes stronger. I think the empathy that women bring is unique to the gender. Um, I think we approach things with a slightly more sensitive, often misconstrued as emotional, but I would say sensitive, <laughs> uh, a sensitivity that um, is the feminine touch and it's something that I think we're all really proud of. I think when you're creating com uh, content, you're essentially looking at emotion, you're looking at uh, feelings, you're looking at understanding people. And I think um, what better approach than to have a set of women, you know, whether it is at our end or like uh, Sonakshi was saying at the at the Bansali uh, office, there's a lot of wonderful women and many of our other projects as well. I think uh, when, when women come together, contrary to all the you know, popular notions, I think it's, it's, it's a show of strength as opposed to any other thing. Um, there's, there's this wonderful saying, I can't remember right now by who, but it says you don't know the potency of a woman until, uh, a woman is like a, a tea bag. You don't know the potency until she's in hot water. <laughs> Sonakshi, you, like you said a little earlier, you've been a part of the industry for 14 years and you're someone who's learned on the job and never really been trained for it. As you sit here today being a part of such a fantastic project like Hira Mandi in association with Netflix, if you would look back at your journey, what are some of the things that come and kind of come to your mind as highlights and what do you think, how have you evolved as an actor over the years? I think as a journey, I wouldn't change a thing. Every experience has counted to put me where I am today, right? And I wouldn't have it any other way. I've seen my ups, I've seen my downs, I've seen um, it all actually. And like I said, I learned on the job. So for me, it was actually a very eventful, very fruitful, very uh, a lovely learning experience more than anything else. And I continue to learn even today. Every film set I go to, I approach it like it's my first day on set. And I think that's what keeps me going. Uh, this is still something I really look forward to doing every day when I wake up. I want to be on a set. I want to um, be a different person uh, with every different film. I want to see what vision my director has and how I can portray it to the best of my ability, right? And that's what really keeps me really excited about the job till today. And uh, yeah, I think the journey has been fantastic and I hope I continue to learn because I think that is something that will keep me invested always. I think from every time that I've met you, I don't think you're someone who'll ever get complacent. So I'm sure <laughs> that you understand the fact that learning should never stop. Absolutely. Yeah. I, for anyone, yeah. I think the greatest of the greats that you see today, they are still learning and they are, you know, okay to admit it. They're open to admitting it. Um, yeah, so I think it should never stop for anyone. So Nakshi, as a part of someone in the industry, you know, what are some of the changes that you see in and around you that you feel has fueled and, you know, helped in this change when it comes to telling women's stories? I think the reception of the audiences, uh, it has changed over the years. Um, writing has changed over the years. Uh, there are a lot more roles that, are, that portray women in a very strong light than before, I feel. I think that has changed. Uh, of course, our consumption of uh, content has changed uh, in the last few years, actually, very, very recently. And uh, yeah, I think change is inevitable, right? And we all have to learn how to adapt to that change as actors, as writers, as creators, um, everyone. So I think we're all doing pretty well so far. <laughs> and uh, I hope we continue to because change is always going to happen. I know everyone I speak to nowadays, every actor, every filmmaker, producer that I speak to nowadays and ask this question, everyone says that we are somewhere closing the gap. We are inching towards that, you know, the huge difference is kind of closing in a little bit and the hope is that you only kind of get very close to equality, right? Uh, before we go, I have two quick questions for the two of you. What is the one thing that you took away from being a part of Hira Mandi? Any of you? Would you like to go first? <laughs> I'll go first. I think um, for me, I remember very clearly sort of, you know, talking to Bella when I was discussing my possible role at Netflix and she said, who would you work with uh, if you had uh, a choice in the Indian ecosystem? And I genuinely mean this. I said uh, Mr. Bansali's name 
So I think uh, to see the entire journey of uh, Hira Mandi come to life has been nothing short of a dream. You know, it is, um, it's a dream that came to life across the last two years, and it has been bigger, better, I think grander than our wildest imagination, and it is all kudos to the creator, the creative voice that really sort of um, envisions, uh, you know, a germ of an idea that sort of fructifies into this beautiful expression. I think it is, uh, no dream is too big. Uh, and, you know, creativity will sort of get us there. And I think there is so much to discover in our landscape. Uh, when I look back at the year that we've had with, you know, huge successes like Kalapani, Railway Men, uh, Scoop, Kohra, the, I can go on, the hunt for Virapan. And as I look ahead, you know, even, even just today, for example, our uh, launches from the last weekend, uh, Mamla Legal Hair, as well as uh, Buried Truths, the documentary series, both are in the global uh, top 10 non-English series. So it is, uh, what an exciting time it is to take Indian stories, Indian content, Indian voices, Indian actors, Indian creators to the world and really, really sort of open up all the stories that we have to tell to lean on their creative voices, to really support them, collaborate them, and really express them in the most dynamic visual expression that we can create. And it's been an amazing journey to do that. Thanks, Tanya. Sunakshi? I think I have walked away as a more patient and a more resilient actor. Yeah, it's a good thing. <laughs> because good things take time and greater things